Heather, God bless you. You are welcome to prophetic intercession with Anel. God says, someone is waiting for you at this place. They have been given a strict instruction concerning you. Someone is waiting for you at this particular place and they have been given a strict instruction concerning you. The ways of God are not the ways of man. The Bible says, as the earth is far away from the heavens, so are the thoughts of God far away from the thoughts of man. There is no searching of God's understanding. That is why God might say certain things and it doesn't look as though it makes sense. It looks as though it is crazy. But God knows what he is doing and he knows what he is saying. There was a famine and in the land and God told Elijah, go to Zarephath. I have assigned the widow to help you, to feed you. I mean, that is the most craziest thing to hear. How can you assign a widow to feed me? All right. Maybe she's a happy widow. Maybe her husband was a billionaire and left her with so much wealth. Maybe she has a lord and she can have some to spare for me. And so Elijah journeyed to Zarephath and met this woman. And unfortunately for him, to his disappointment, this woman was not a millionaire widow. She did not have so much like you would think to, you know, to satisfy your conscience. There are certain things God tells you and um, when you look at it, it satisfies your conscience. You're like, okay, this person can afford it. This person can do this. But there are other instructions the Lord tells you and you look at it and it doesn't seem like it is right. It seems like... um. Of course, the instructions of God are always very crazy. And this is Elijah, Elijah reaching out to this lady and telling her, please, can you give me some food? Can you give me some bread? And the widow replies by saying, I'm sorry, I just have a little. It's so little that when my child and I eat it, we are going to die. She was not saying they would die because the, the flour she had had poison, but because it was the last she had. And she did not have any hope anywhere. She did not have any hope anywhere to get some more food supplies for her and her son. And whenever I share the story, I always thank God for the persistence of the man of God. Because the man of God would have been moved by emotion, would have been moved by what he saw. And he would have told the widow, it's okay. Really, this is small. I can't deprive you and your son of this little meal. But thank God, the man of God was persistent and said, It's okay. Do as you have said, but make for me first. And that instruction, and I was sharing with, uh, with us on our live session today, and I said, The only reason why God is going to instruct someone to give to Elijah is because the widow had the heart to give. God had searched the heart of the widow and God knew she is someone that wants to give. She loves to give. It's not going to be a big deal for her to give, you know. And so she decided to do it, even though it was her last. Now, there are so many, there are so many um, things to draw from the story. But right now, um, I, I don't talk about the part of the widow, but I'm talking about the part of Elijah. She would have looked at the widow and minimized her and said, look at this poor woman. What can she really feed me with? And even when the widow said, I'm sorry, I just have a little, he would have let go and just continued. But God had given him a word and he pressed on this word and the word yielded for him. God told him, go to Zarephite. I have Kept the widow there, that will help you. Sometimes the instruction God gives you is crazy. The people he brings you with, do not, they, don't, they don't look the path. 
God tells you this person is your destiny helper and you look at them physically, they don't look like someone that can help you. God tells you this person is your husband, this person is your wife and you, can, you look at them physically and they don't look like someone that can appeal to your emotions that you can love. God tells you, I am sending you to this land. It is in this land you are going to prosper. And you look at the land, you do your Google research, and you, you, you realize that the economy of the, of the country is so low. And you're asking yourself, how, why would God be sending me to this place? What's there for me? When God tells you something, you've got to believe and trust that he knows what he is saying and he's going to come through. It might not look like it, but you have to persist the same way Elijah persisted on the video. You have to insist until you see that which God had told you. If it were not so, God will not say it. Jesus speaking to his disciples, he said, I am going to prepare a place for you in heaven. If it were not so, I would not tell you. God doesn't say vain things. He only says the things he means and, it, and he means the things he says. When you look at the things God says, the face value might not be it. It might not look like it. God might bring someone to you and tell you this person is your destiny helper. But you look at them at, at, and at the moment they don't represent any possibility whatsoever. But if you believe the word of the Lord and you press on, on the word that God gave you, sooner than later, you are going to see that word begin to manifest. Sooner than later, you are going to see the manifestations. You are going to see that word begin to produce. I don't know what God has told you. And maybe you have given up on the word because you feel like it is not feasible. It's not going to happen. Now is the right time to revisit it. Now is the right time to tell God, I, I am sorry I doubted you. I am sorry I, I minimized the people you brought my way. I did not think. I'm just releasing this word and God just reminded me of something. I have always gotten my greatest blessings from the most unlikely places. The people that have blessed me the most have always been the people I least expected. I mean, I did not have, I did not really expect they had anything for me. The people who have given me information that helped me greatly have hardly been people I thought were something. Hardly. Hardly. But because God said it, eventually it happened. Listening to this word, you should go back to those things God told you and you looked at them and it did not seem like they had anything in it for you. Look back on those things and just press on them. Insist a little, just like Elijah, Elijah did. They might be saying, I don't have anything, you know. But if you insist only a little, you are going to see that what God said, would come to pass. Hallelujah. Did you receive this word with gladness? May the Lord bless you and keep you, cause his face to shine upon you. May he be gracious to you and give you peace. In Jesus' mighty name, amen.